how can you make a Minecraft server in 1.19.2? Well, in this video, we're going to go over every single step of how to download, install, and then create your very own Minecraft server in 1.19.2. First things first, though, I do have kind of a disclaimer. This is not a 24-hour server. It's only up when your computer is up and running. It's also meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust, and basically would invite over to your house. The reason for that is because this server is hosted on your IP address, and anyone who gets your IP address can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, as well as do things like DDoS you and take your internet offline. Lastly, this does require a decent internet connection and a pretty good computer. That's because it's hosted on your own computer, as we mentioned already, and that means your computer needs to not only be able to play Minecraft, but also run a Minecraft server at the same time. With all that being said, though, what if you just want to start a server in the quickest and easiest way possible? You want the server to be 24 hours, 7 days a week, and you want it to be public, or you want it to be private. You want the option. What if you want to add mods to your server, add plugins, things like that? Well, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, where you don't have to worry about security. You can give your server to anyone you want. You can make it public. You can make it private. That is up to you. And it's super easy to add mods and plugins to add Apex Minecraft hosting with over 200 mod packs having one click installation. We love it just Apex so much that we host all of our Minecraft servers on Apex Minecraft hosting and truthfully I wouldn't recommend hosting a server anywhere else. They have amazing hardware meaning you don't have to worry about the hardware at all if you can play on a server like Hypixel for example you can play on your Apex Minecraft hosting server it's hosted on their hardware not yours and on top of that you fully control your server meaning you can add mods, plugins, all of that which we mentioned already. Lastly they have 24 hours 7 day a week support so should you have an issue with your server Apex is there to help you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you'll very quickly and easily be able to connect with a real person and get help. So nevertheless, go check out Apex, the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server. Again, we use them to host all of our servers. They're truly incredible. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get our server up and running here. Well, Apex is the easiest way to host a server. It's not the only way. And in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to get your server up and running on your own computer. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first, you want to go to the second link in the description down below. That's going to take you here. This is our complete text tutorial for how to make a Minecraft server in 1.19, 1.19.1, 1.19.2. This tutorial will work for all of those versions. So once you're here, go ahead and scroll down. And once you're here, click on the download Minecraft button. That will take us off to Minecraft's official website where we can download Minecraft underscore server 1.19.2.jar. How do you download this? By clicking this link right here, this Minecraft server link. When you click on that, it's automatically going to download in the bottom left of Google Chrome or in the center of your screen on Mozilla Firefox. You may need to keep this in the bottom left of Chrome or save it on Firefox and it's 100% safe to do that because this is Minecraft.net. This is Minecraft's official website. So again, just click this link here to start that download and then it will download in the bottom left of Chrome or in the center of your screen on Firefox. Firefox. Now let's go ahead and minimize our browser and what we want to do is create a new folder on our desktop. So let's right click, create a new folder, then we're going to name this folder Minecraft 1.19.2 server. You can name this folder anything, but that way you know exactly what it is. It's your Minecraft 1.19.2 server. Now let's go ahead and drag and drop our server file into this folder. To do that, you want to find it in your downloads folder. So click the little Windows icon to the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. And yes, this is fully working on Windows 11. Click that Windows icon, type in downloads, and then you have this downloads file folder here. Open this up and in here you'll find the server.jar. Go ahead and drag and drop this from your downloads folder into the Minecraft folder on your desktop, the Minecraft server folder there. Now when we open up the Minecraft server folder, We'll be able to see here server.jar is in this folder. Now, you should be able to go ahead and double click on this. That is assuming you have the correct version of Java and you've ran the jar fix and basically Java is handling your jar files. How can you check that? Well, as you can see here, mine has this little Java icon. That's one clue. So if you have this little Java icon, awesome, you're good to go. But if you don't have a Java icon here or when you double click on this, it doesn't give you these files and folders here. Well, what do you do, right? What do you do? Well, you need to download and install Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers as well as Minecraft mods, and this is a complete guide on how to do everything with Java 17. It goes through it all in depth to make sure that you can get your server up and running 
in Minecraft 1.19.2 without any Java issues. You may also need to run the jar fix. And what this is going to do is take all the jar files from your computer and link them back to Java. If you had issues opening the jar file, you need to run the jar fix truthfully because the jar fix is what's going to allow you to easily double click on the file. It's also a super simple three step tutorial and it'll be up and running. Nevertheless, we can minimize our browser and you should be able to double click on that server.jar again. When you double click on that, it's going to give you these files and folders here, right? Now, once you've got these files and folders, we specifically want to look at the eula.txt file. Go ahead and open that file up in Notepad, right like so. And then in here, you want to make sure you agree to this eula, which we do. So let's go to eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Once you have eula equals true here, you can click file, save, and it will save the eula.txt file, right like so. Make sure there's no spaces after this or anything like that, that it's all on one line, just eula equals true, exactly like that. File save, close out of this, and now when you double click on this server.jar, your Minecraft server is actually going to start, right? It's going to start up, you're going to see here that it's going to pull up this, this is your server's console, and this is everything that's going on in your server. As you can see, preparing level world, it's basically meaning, in, meaning it is spawning in the world folder for your Minecraft server right now. Spawn areas generating, all that stuff, at this point, your server is working. So let's go ahead and join it. Now, it is worth noting right now, you're the only person that can join your Minecraft server. But if you're like me, I like to test things as I go along instead of just getting to the end and seeing why something's not working. So let's see if you can join your server right now. To do that, go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.19.2. I'll meet you on the main menu. So here we are, Minecraft 1.19.2 is now open. You can see in the bottom left, it is 1.19.2. We then want to click on multiplayer. And then you might get this pop up. If you don't, no worries. But if you do, let's go ahead and click do not show again and proceed or just click proceed doesn't matter and then we want to go ahead and click direct connection here in the direct connection screen you just simply want to type local host all one word exactly like that as your ip just local host all together and then click join server and on the left hand side we're going to see the server is going to join us on in there it is nix games and we are now joining into our server again right now i am the only person that can join this server but it's worth testing at this point just to make sure everything is working. And obviously it is. We are in the server, moving around, we can like break blocks, all of that stuff. We can also go ahead and op ourselves in this server. So come over here to the server console area. And if we look right here, we can type op and then our username right in this text box, exactly like that. Hit enter, and as you can see, we have now been made a server operator in game. If we do slash game mode creative, well, we can now do that. If you're not opt, you can't do that. You can't use you know game mode, change the weather and all that stuff. If you're not opt, we are, so we can. One of the reasons I wanted to do that is I wanted to uh, do something crazy, like uh, spam down some diamond blocks here just to show that this is the same server we are going to be joining later on, right? So let's go ahead, we'll do that, and make ourselves sort of like a just diamond square here. Boom, there we go. I guess that's not a square. Let's do one more layer, make it a square. Boom. So that's going to be there when we spawn back in later on after we've allowed our friends to join. The only reason we're doing that is just to show you it's the same server. So now at this point... How do we do that? How do we allow our friends to join this Minecraft server? Well, we need to go ahead and disconnect and close out of Minecraft. We also want to go ahead and stop right over here our Minecraft server. So we want to stop the server. Always stop your server this way because if you don't, it's not going to work correctly. You could lose your world and have corruption and all that. So come over here and always stop your server by typing stop in this text box and hitting enter. When you do that, it's going to go ahead and close out of the server properly. Now we can also go ahead and close out of our server folder. Literally, all we need to do here is go to our desktop. Then we want to start by clicking the top left of our screen, bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen, that little Windows icon, click on that, and then type in CMD, go to command prompt here, and then in command prompt, what we want to do is type IP, CON, FIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. It's then going to open up this information here. There's a ton of information here, but all we need is two numbers. I'm going to go ahead and type these in notepad. You can write them down on a post-it note. It doesn't matter what you do. You just want to make sure that you get track of these numbers or write down these numbers. So the two we need is the IPv4 address. So let's go ahead and IPv4 address. And we want to copy this over. So mine is 192.168.1.9. Then we also need our default gateway. So let's go ahead and grab the default gateway, right like so. Yours might have numbers and letters. If that's the case, there'll be one on the next line that's just numbers. You want the default gateway that's just numbers. And in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. Yours could be the same or different, just depends. But you want to make sure that it is only numbers. If there's one on top that's letters and numbers, go with the one that's just numbers. 
Nevertheless, let's go ahead and close out of Command Prompt here, because these are the only two things we need. Now let's go ahead, open up our browser, and then in our browser, we want a brand new tab. And right up here at the top, where you would normally type in the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com, anything like that, we want to type in our default gateway. So in my case, that is 192.168.1.1. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me this login box. Now you're going to have a login box of some sort as well, right? So basically, it might be like mine, pop in from the top. Yours might be in a nice GUI style format in the center of your screen. It could do a pop-up just on your screen, like a new window sort of pop-up. It could also pop up from the bottom of the screen, but no matter what, you're going to have some sort of login box. And in this login box, you enter in your router's username and password. So if you know that, go ahead and enter it in here. But if you don't, we have a helpful guide in the description how to find your router's password. And this goes over everything you need to know. It basically gives you methods. So start with method one, work all the way down through method five and find your router's password. Most people, by the way, find it by method three, if not method four, and then you'll be able to come back and log into your router. So I'm going to go ahead, log into our router, and then it's time to port forward. There we go. We have now logged into our router. Most likely your router will look completely different from mine, and that's actually A-OK. -okay. And the reason for that is because we have completed a guide on how to port forward on any router. Specifically, this video up here at the top is worth checking out. Even if your specific model of router is not linked in that video, it's probably worth watching it all the way through because router software is very similar. Netgear and Cisco, for example, are very similar. AT&T and Linksys can be very similar. All these different sort of router brands out there have very similar software. And as you're watching through that, even if your specific router is not on there, you'll probably be like, oh, this is similar to my router. This one goes over Linksys, Asus, Netgear, Verizon, AT&T, all those popular routers. It is covered in this video. We also have a text tutorial that kind of goes through it generally. But the big thing is this video up here at the top. I'm also going to be giving you common port forward terms as we're doing it here. So first things first, for me, it is in advanced, and then it is in advanced again, and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be in advanced. It could be an admin. It could be in apps and gaming. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be a NAT and port forwarding. I've seen that before. It could be in an advanced or administration tab or admin tab. It could be in a security tab. For example, I think on Linksys routers, it is security and then it is port forwarding. So overall, what you're looking for is port forwarding. Just click around your router. You can't break anything. I know it can feel overwhelming. You can't really break anything until you find port forwarding and then you can't break anything there. That's just what we're looking for. So click around. If it means clicking security, if it means clicking administration, if it means clicking advanced, click through all this stuff, click through the menus, and then when you see port forwarding, select that. So here we are. This is the port forwarding screen for my router. As you can see, I already have a Minecraft port forwarded. We'll go ahead and get rid of that so we can add it again for this video. Once you're here, you want to make sure port forwarding is selected if you have that option. Otherwise, just click add a new port forward or in my case, add custom service. You may just have a big list, like a big row of empty boxes. And if that's the case, just go with the first one on that list. For me, I have to add a custom service here. Once we've added our port forward, we're in the port forward sort of screen, you have some sort of name or ID. Mine's called service name, yours could be called ID. We just want to name this Minecraft because that's what this is for. You can name it Minecraft or Minecraft server. For protocol, this needs to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. No matter what, you want to make sure both of these are selected. And if for whatever reason you can't do that, do this twice. Do this port forward. Everything else the same. Once for TCP, once it again for UDP. But if you can select both, just select both. That's what we've done here. For anything mentioning the word port, P-O-R-T, for anything mentioning the word port, you want to make it 25565. So as you can see, we have external port range. Doesn't matter if it's external, internal, inside port, outside port, port one and port two. It doesn't matter. If it says the word port, it's going to be 25565. So as you can see, external port, 25565. Internal port, hey, port appears again, 25565. That's what it's going to be. Last but not least, for your internal IP address or local IP address, this is your IPv4. So in my case, 192.168.1, and then it was .9 over here. Now it is worth noting that you may have a big list of basically all the devices on your computer. As you can see, there is mine, right? This desktop is just called desktop with a random number, and there is my local IP address, my IPv4 address. You can select the device here as well if you don't want to enter it in. Doesn't matter, just select the computer you're making the server on. Finally, go ahead and click Apply, Save, OK. Doesn't really matter, but just save your port forward. 
Some of you, though, will have an external or outside IP address, and if that's the case, you need your public IP address. And guess what? Everyone watching this video needs their public IP address because that is how your friends are going to join your server. And in the description down below, we have this. This is our website where we just take your IP address and show it back to you. But you can actually see what can happen if this IP address gets out. Your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates are leaked via your public IP. So that's why you want to keep this only to your friends, your family, people you trust. If you don't want this to get out, you want to host a server and not have to worry about it, that's where Apex comes in. There's a helpful link right there should you want to go check out Apex. Now let's just go ahead and copy this. Now all you can see on this screen is 177 because that's the end of my IP address and that's okay if that gets out. The rest of it we want to keep private because again you don't want to give this to everybody on the internet. Nevertheless if we come back over here we can paste this into our port forward if we need it. If that was the case save it all that stuff otherwise your port forward is already complete and we can minimize our browser. Now what we want to do is go ahead and start our Minecraft server. So to do that, come in here and double click on the server.jar. We also want to go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.19.2. So once Minecraft 1.19.2 is open, we can select multiplayer. Again, you may have to select proceed, all that stuff in this. Perfectly normal to do that. And then go ahead and click direct connection again. You can add this as a server if you want, but you don't have to. Now what we're going to do is type in our server IP address as our public IP. Now again, this is all blacked out. All you can see is 177 here, but that just shows you it's the same one that we had earlier. Now if we go ahead and click join server. It's going to join us right on into that Minecraft server that we were hosted earlier because it's this Minecraft server over here. Now, unfortunately, we've got to some of the, uh, you know, console over here whited out, but you can see at the very, very bottom, Nix Games joined the game. That's showing you that we did join, in fact, the same servers earlier. And here is our diamonds. We can punch out a hole in the middle if we want, because why not? Looking good. Actually, kind of, kind of don't mind this. Yeah. But nevertheless, that is how you can create a Minecraft server. At this point, I do want to note that you may not be able to join via your public IP. If that's the case, that's perfectly normal because basically what you're doing is asking your computer and your internet service provider to connect you back to yourself. That's a little weird and a lot of internet service providers just won't allow that. That's okay though, as long as your friends can join via your public IP. They're the only people that have to be able to join using the public IP address. You can join via local host without any issues while your friends are joining off of your public IP. That being said, what if your friends can't join off of your public IP? Or what if you're having other random issues with your Minecraft server? What if you want to add more RAM to your Minecraft server? Well, we have guides in the description for a lot of this stuff. So how to add more RAM, that's in the description. How to allow Java through your Windows firewall. If your friends are having trouble joining the server, this is most likely why. Windows Defender is probably blocking your Minecraft server from allowing people to join it. And guess what? That's what this video is. Helped over 226,000 people. Now, if you're still having issues with your server after adding more RAM or after, you know, allowing Java through your firewall, we have this in-depth guide that goes 21 minutes of just server troubleshooting. Literally, all it is for 21 minutes is me troubleshooting potential issues you could have in your Minecraft server. Super in-depth, covers tons and tons of information and worth watching through. Even if you don't have any issues with your server, go check out this video because if you have an issue in the future, this will help you solve it right away. Nonetheless, though, that is how you can get your server up and running and Minecraft in get your friends joining your server as well. We're here, we're live, the server is live, things are looking great. So nonetheless, if you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And it is worth mentioning that all of this stuff is super simple at Apex. You can have a server up and running in under five minutes at Apex Minecraft Hosting. We love and trust them so much. All of our servers are hosted on Apex. These local servers, they're just spun up locally. I would never let anyone else joining this server because I care about internet security and all that stuff. So for that reason, everything is hosted on Apex. Plus at Apex, you don't have to worry about your computer's hardware. You don't have to worry about your internet connection. All you have to do is set the server up and then click join, basically. Get the IP, copy, paste it into Minecraft and click join. It's that simple. So nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible Minecraft server content every single day of the week. Minecraft mods, Minecraft bedrock, all sorts of content coming out. So yeah, be sure to subscribe for that. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.